Hello friends, in this video we are going to discuss about the weightage of the marks allotted for per chapter in the Karnataka CET exam. As we know the Karnataka CET exam is conducted by the Karnataka Education Authority, in short it is known as KEA for the filling up of the seats of the engineering and other professional courses. The CET exam consists of four papers that is physics, chemistry, maths and biology. In this video, we will be discussing only about the weightage of marks in the physics. The physics paper consists of 60 marks. Each question carries one marks in the physics. The physics syllabus is divided into two parts. That is the first year syllabus and the second year syllabus. Most, most of the times, the first year syllabus has got less weightage than the second year syllabus. In the first year syllabus, the first year syllabus consists of 15 chapters as well as the second year syllabus consists of 15 chapters. In the first year's 15 chapters, the weightage of the first year's 15 chapters is relatively less compared to the second year's 15 chapters. Usually what happens in the CET exam for the physics paper is the 75% of the marks or 45 questions will be coming from the second year's syllabus and 15 questions or 25% of the syllabus or will be asked from the first year's syllabus. The first year's syllabus consists of 15 chapters and I am going to discuss about those chapters in brief about how those how the questions were asked from those 15 chapters in the first year syllabus in the past 5 years or the, the questions asked in the past 5 question papers of this Nataka CET exam in the physics. So the first chapter in the first year's syllabus is physical world which is a just as an introduction chapter to the syllabus. So in that chapter we don't have anything conceptual or anything in the numerical way so we may not be asked any question from the first chapter. Now going to the second chapter which is units and measurements over the past five years we, ca we can see that it ha there, there has been no questions asked in one of the papers and it can be one question or it can be two questions asked from this chapter. The units and measurements chapter is a conceptual as well as a numerical one. But majority of the syllabus in this chapter is conceptual. So there is a more possibility that you are getting going to get a conceptual question than a rather than a numerical question. The conceptual question can have the dimensional formulae or the relation between the dimensions of the quantities or it can also contain the conversion from one system of units to another system of units. The numerical, ch the chances of numerical questions being asked is that the only place they can ask the numerical question, numerical based question is the errors, errors in the measurements. It can be based on the relative error or the percentage error. You will be given some equation and you will be asked to calculate the error in the measurement of the final result. So that is about the units and measurements. The next two chapters that is the motion in a straight line and motion in a plane. You can expect one question or two questions from these two chapters. And these two chapters are both. They have the conceptual points as well as the numerical ones. The conceptual part contains that the kinematic equations and the kinematic equations based numerical problems can also be asked from the chapter 3. The chapter 3 also introduces the concept of acceleration due to gravity and that is going there also you can be asked some question which on the basis of the kinematic equations or the acceleration due to gravity. It also introduces to the concept of relative velocity. So there is also a chance that you may get a question from the relative velocity. The chapter also introduces to the basic concepts like the instantaneous velocity, average velocity instantaneous acceleration, average acceleration and also to the concepts of the uniform motion and the non-uniform motion. Chapter 4 which is motion in a plane which it also consists of conceptual as well as numerical problems. The conceptual part consists of introduction to vectors, the dot product and the uh, vector product. It can also, it also has the projectile motion in which we study about the range of a projectile, the time of flight and the height of the flight. The questions from this, uh, this chapter can, can be based on the theoretical concepts of vectors and scalars. It can also consist the numerical problems based on the projectile motion or the uniform circular motion. 
नेक्स्ट चैप्टर इज द लॉज ऑफ मोशन दिस इज अ मोस्टली ए कॉन्सेप्चुअल क्वेश्चन सो दे इज ए मैक्सिमम चांस दैट यू विल गेट ए कॉन्सेप्चुअल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर बट दिस इज ऑल्सो नॉट बी टू बी सर्टन दैट इट इज ओनली द कॉन्सेप्चुअल पार्ट दिस नाउ द बैंकिंग ऑफ द रोड मीन्स इट कैन बी दे कैन आस्क ए न्यूमेरिकल क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दैट पार्ट और दे कैन आस्क ए थेरोटिकल क्वेश्चन बेस्ड ऑन द फॉर्मूला From this chapter, you can expect one question or two questions. They can be conceptual or numerical ones. The next chapter is work, energy, and power. This chapter is also broadly a conceptual chapter. You can expect the questions based on the work energy theorem, or you can also be asked numerical problems on the calculations of energy or power. So you can expect one question or two questions from this chapter also. next chapter is the system of particles and rotational motion it is a large chapter and it has got many concepts into it starting from the concept of center of mass it 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 introduces to the rotational motion it also introduces to the concepts of the rotational motion such as angular velocity angular acceleration and angular momentum it also introduces to the concept of torque and also the equilibrium of rigid body so from this chapter you can expect two to three questions mostly conceptual but also there is a chance that you may be asked a numerical based question on the concept of moment of inertia or the calculation of torque the chapter also consists two theorems which are like the parallel axis theorem and the perpendicular axis theorem which are mostly conceptual next chapter is the gravitation you can be asked a concept based question on the kepler's laws or you can also be asked a numerical based questions on the escape velocity or the orbital velocity of the satellite the next two chapters are mechanical properties of solids and mechanical properties of fluids both these chapter consist of many concepts and the question also you can ex- expect on a conceptual basis from both these chapters you can get at least one or two questions from these two chapters the, these two chapters are mostly conceptual ones they consist the concepts of young's modulus bulk modulus and the shear modulus the fluid properties also consist of the bernoulli's theorems and the torricelli's principle so from these two chapters you can expect some conceptual questions maybe one or maybe two questions may be asked from this these two chapter next chapter is the thermal properties of the matter from this chapter you may get two to three questions based on the thermal properties of the matter or the heat radiation or the heat transfer from one body to another body you may expect some conceptual questions from this chapter but also there is a chance that you may get a numerical question as well based on the basis of the tra- heat transfer next chapter is thermodynamics in which you can expect the question based on a theoretical question that is the conceptual question based on the carnot cycle and the carnot engine Next chapter is the kinetic theory of gases it is mostly a th- theoretical chapter it's a very small chapter you may get ex- you may not get any question from this chapter or you may get one question from this chapter it is mostly based on the kinetic theory or the gas equation that is the universal gas equation the question can also be asked on the basis of the degrees of freedom of the gas the final two chapters of the first year syllabus are the oscillations and waves these two are large chapters so you can expect two to three questions from these two chapters in the oscillations you can get a theoretical question based on the simple harmonic motion or you can get a numerical question based on the concept of simple pendulum or a loaded spring which is oscillating with a fixed frequency the major concept of this chapter is the simple harmonic motion so you can expect one or two questions from this chapter The last chapter is waves the waves chapter is a large one you can expect some two to three questions from this chapter on the basis of velocity of sound or you can get it from the dopplers effect the chapter also introduces to the concepts of the harmonic so you can also expect the questions based on the harmonics of open pipe and a closed pipe or also it can it it also has the concept of harmonics of a stretched string so you can expect some conceptual questions as well as some numerical questions based on this chapter that was a- from the second year syllabus we have got 15 chapters and all of these chapters are having very large concepts and most of the concepts are based on many variety of the principles and many variety of these principles are going to give us many questions from this chapter and also we know that 75% of the syllabus or most of the times 45 questions are being asked from the second year syllabus 
now talking of the second year syllabus it starts with electric charges and fields it starts with the concept of coulomb's law then it enters into the concept of electric fields electric flux then it introduces to the gauss law and the electric dipole from this chapter you can expect some questions based on the coulomb's law which will be mostly numerical ones you can also get the questions from the electric fields mostly numerical ones and also from the gauss law which can be numerical ones the conceptual questions are rare in this chapter so you can expect two to three questions numerical questions from this chapter second chapter is electrostatic potential and capacitance this too is similar to the first chapter it has got many concepts it introduces to the concept of the potential then potential energy and at the end it introduces to the concept of the capacitance so you can expect some questions mostly numerical ones based on the principles of electrostatic potential or the capacitance there is a more probability that you will get a question on the, based on capacitance rather than potential so you can also expect some theoretical con con theoretical and conceptual questions based on the principle of equipotential surface chapter 3 is the largest one of the entire puc syllabus it in the theory also it has got much weightage in the cet also you can expect many questions as we can see in the past it has got some 6 to 8 questions mostly in the previous papers this chapter is current electricity and you can expect many questions theoretical conceptual as well as numerical ones from this chapter the theoretical cha theoretical questions you can expect are from the drift velocity part or the current density part but the numerical ones are will be based on kirchhoff's laws wheatstone's bridge and the meter bridge so you can expect 6 to 8 questions from this chapter next chapter is the moving charges and magnetism from this chapter also you may get 3 to 5 questions as we can see in the past also they have asked 3 to 5 questions and in this chapter you may get theoretical or conceptual questions based on biot savart's law or ampere circuit law but there is also a chance that you will get numerical questions based on the con concepts of solenoids and toroids there is also a possibility that you will get a numerical question from this one based on the current the force between the current carrying conductors that is the parallel conductors carrying current next chapter is the magnetism and matter in this chapter you may get the questions based on magnetism and the properties of magnetic materials so mostly the chapter is theoretical one so you may ex expect some conceptual questions and these conceptual questions may be based on the susceptibility on which the substances are classified as diamagnets paramagnets and ferromagnets the con the chapter also in gives the relation between the dipole and the bar magnet that is a current carrying solenoid is behaving like a bar magnet so in this chapter you will get mostly a theoretical question but also you can expect the numerical one the next chapter is electromagnetic induction this is also a theoretical or ch conceptual chapter so most probability you most probably you may get a question you may get some questions from this chapter on the theoretical basis you may expect some 3 to 4 questions from this chapter based on conceptual points of this chapter but there is also a possibility that the question may be asked it can be a numerical the numerical questions will be mostly based on the calculation of self inductance or mutual inductance or the emf induced in a current carrying coil or in a coil due to a current being carried in another coil next chapter is alternating current in this chapter also you can expect four to five questions the chapter is broad one so it has got many concepts but the chances of getting a conceptual questions question from this chapter is less but there is a max, more probability that you will get it, get the questions based on numerical numerical questions so the numerical questions may be asked that can be based on the concept of inter that is the rms value of the current or voltage or the average value of the current and voltage or phase difference between the current and voltage when the ac is applied to resistor capacitor or inductor the chapter also consists the concepts of resonance the resonant frequency the quality factor and the power factor you can also expect these question the the questions based on the power factor and the quality factor or there is also a chance that you will get a numerical question based on the principle of transformers next chapter in this syllabus is the electromagnetic waves it is one of the smallest chapters in the syllabus so you may expect no questions or one question and that one question will be a conceptual one because there is no not much calculation in this chapter 
the next chapter is ray optics and optical instruments and from this chapter you can expect three to four questions and these three to four questions can be on conceptual basis or the numerical basis the conceptual questions can be based on the numerical and that is the mirror equation or the lens maker formula the numerical questions can also be based on the mirror equation or the lens maker formula the questions can also be asked on the basis of the angle of minimum deviation for a prism or the magnification in telescope or a microscope you can also expect some question based on the human eye or the defects in the human eye coming to the next chapter that is the wave optics it introduces to the concepts of the interference diffraction and polarization these three concepts are going to lead to some questions that is theoretical questions or you may get some conceptual questions or the questions which are going to use the concepts of these three that is interference and diffraction and the polarization you can also expect some numerical questions based on the young's double slit experiment the interference pattern the band width or the fringe width and also you can expect some numerical questions based on the diffraction that is again the fringe width or the distances between the two fringes of given said given wavelength in this chapter also you can expect three to four questions which can be conceptual or numerical ones the next chapter is dual nature of mat matter and radiation from this chapter you can expect two to three questions and those two to three questions will be mostly numerical ones on the principle of photoelectric current that is the electron emission or it can be based on the stopping potential when the the electrons are getting emitted from the vacuum tube the next chapter is atoms from this chapter also you can expect two to three questions it's a small chapter mostly it deals with the structure of atom and the empty space present between the nucleus and the size of the atom the questions may be asked from the size of the hydrogen atom or the radius of the electron orbitals in the hydrogen atom or it can be also based on the spectral series that is the lyman series bamer series and the passions etc so you can expect some theoretical question or some numerical questions from this chapter or as well next is nuclei the nuclei chapter introduces to the concept of radiation or the radioactivity from that it goes to the radioactive law and at the end the chapter gives the nuclear fission and nuclear fusion and from this chapter also we can expect some two to three questions based on theoretical information or the theoretical concept there can also be numerical questions based on the concept of mass defect and the energy that is energy mass energy einstein's relation that is the e equals mc square you can expect two to three questions some of them can be conceptual some of them can be numerical ones next is the second biggest chapter of the second year's syllabus that is the semiconductor electronics from this chapter you can expect three to five questions and because the chapter is mostly theoretical ones so you can expect some theoretical questions mostly based on the energy bands or the structure of intrinsic semiconductors or extrinsic semiconductors the production of holes and the electron pairs the semiconductor electronics chapter is mostly theoretical ones hence you can expect mostly some conceptual questions the questions can also be asked from the applications of diodes such as rectifiers or or the transistors the transistors mostly the question can be asked from the amplification part that is the transistor acting as an amplifier so you can expect some three to five questions most of them will be theoretical ones or the conceptual ones the chapter ends with dig principles of digital logic from that part also you can expect one question which will be relatively easier compared to the other the syllabus ends with the communication systems you can expect one question or maybe in the rare case you may get two questions from this chapter the questions will be mostly theoretical ones as the chapter mostly deals with the theoretical concepts of the elements of the communication system or the bandwidth of the communication system the question can be questions can be also based on the amplitude modulation or frequency modulation or the modulation index the chapter can also ask the question based on the size of antenna which can from which that is going to be based on the principles of electromagnetic waves as well. you may expect one or two questions from this chapter that was about the questions that can be asked from the from the first years and second years syllabus the second year syllabus most of the times it carries 75% of the marks and the first year syllabus carries 25% of the mark so 45 questions will be mostly from the second year syllabus and only 15 questions will be from the first year syllabus in the Karnataka CET exam that is for the physics paper 
with that i hope it gives a clear picture of how the questions may be asked from the first year syllabus and the second year syllabus the purpose of this video was to make friends the students aware of the situation how the questions will be asked from the different chapters of the first years as well as from the second years physics syllabus the questions will always be based on the ncert book so better go through the each and every chapter you must have already done for the theory theory exams but for reference you can refer to the other books as well but the questions will be mostly from the ncert syllabus with that i conclude this video for the weightage of marks chapter wise weightage of Thank mm -hmm. you.